Most people may be able to imagine how an SMS might work at a large airline or repair station. They probably have lots of people, lots of money, and most have information technology departments. But just how does the FAA expect a small operator with very few people, maybe surviving month to month, and with no computer network to function in an SMS environment? Before we start our example, let's take a look at how a previous FAA administrator feels about small operators and SMS. In a speech at the Shared Vision Conference, the administrator stated that there are those who feel they are too small or don't have time or money for SMS. He disagrees with those sentiments, pointing out that no one and no company is too small for SMS. He further stated that saying you don't have time for SMS is the functional equivalent of saying you don't have time for safety. This seems to be a fairly clear message. There are many different ways to implement an SMS. This presentation shows only one method of how an SMS might work at a small aviation service provider. The focus is on the key elements of an SMS, safety risk management and safety assurance. Safety policy and safety promotion will be discussed near the end of the presentation. This presentation is not the only SMS method available to aviation service providers, but should provide you with some ideas. Let's look at an example. Alpine Air is a fictitious company. However, as you will see, the application of SMS at an Alpine Air-sized organization is simple enough. As long as you understand the safety risk management and safety assurance processes. Two important points. First is that knowledge of the safety risk management and safety assurance processes is what's important. How you document your SRM and assurance is not as critical. This presentation purposely discusses the need to understand safety risk management and safety assurance and illustrates documentation only using simple hard copy paper tools. Secondly, remember that there is nothing new in safety risk management and safety assurance. It's what you've been doing all your aviation career, identifying hazards, analyzing risk, mitigating risk, and following up. What is new is organizing what you've been doing for years into a management system called SMS. Let's say you own a small helicopter operation in Southern California, Alpine Air. You're based at Montgomery Field, San Diego, and have the assets shown on the screen. You have a functioning SMS, so let's see how it works. One day, one of your pilots walks into your office and says, Boss, I was flying over Alpine just now and I saw a new power line across Harbison Canyon. The worst part is, there are no visibility markers on the new line. So what has just happened? You have just started your safety risk management process. What can you say about your SMS so far? You have an effective employee reporting and feedback system. Let's track our example through the safety risk management and safety assurance models. So where are you in the SRM process just now? That's right, you are describing the system where the hazard resides. What's next? You need to identify the hazard. What's wrong? You ask the questions who, what, when, where, and so forth. Before you forget, you open your simple SRM notebook and write System, Operational Flying Area, Hazard, Unmarked Power Line in Harbison Canyon. Now it's time to analyze the risk that this hazard poses. You need some additional information, some data. You call the electric company. And you ask, how big is this new line? Half inch, they reply. 
When will you get visibility markers installed? There's silence on the other end of the phone. You call the FISDO and ask, are you aware of the new power line? Yes, they say. Can you do something about the visibility markers? Again, yes, but it'll take some time. You are still collecting data at this point. You find the operator's manual for the wire cutters on your helicopter and find that the maximum demonstrated cutting capacity is 0.419 inch. That's bad. You think about what happens when a helicopter and a power line interact. That's really bad. Now you already know how often you fly through Harbison Canyon, and that's a lot. So what is your severity and likelihood for this hazard? Now it's time for the risk assessment. Is the risk acceptable or unacceptable? Looking at your data, this is pretty simple. Your risk is unacceptable. How much time have you invested so far in this SRM process? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Have you done anything you've never done before? Something new? Now that you have assessed your risk and found it unacceptable, what can you do to mitigate that risk? The most obvious is putting mission restrictions on flights in or near Harbison Canyon, especially during times of low visibility. You can mark the location of the new power line on the big area map on the wall of your lobby to remind everyone. What else can you do? How about putting reminders everywhere you can think of? Okay, time to bring your documentation up to date. This is a summarized version of what you might have written so far. With your authoring duties complete, are you finished with the safety risk management process at this point? Not yet. You need to consider residual and substitute risk. In other words, is there any risk left over after you apply your controls? Or have you introduced a new hazard while applying your controls? Is the cure worse than the disease? This can be and frequently is done while you're developing your controls in the first place. So just be aware that you have considered this residual or substitute risk. So how did you or do you consider residual and substitute risk? You can talk to your employees, brainstorm with them, even populate your calendar with notes to yourself. Now are you finished with the SRM process? Yes. So what's next? Let's take a look. You take out your safety assurance notebook and write about the risk and associated controls. Now that you have defined your risk, it's time to put your controls in place to make them operational. What's next? The next step is to consider how you will assure your controls worked and continue to be effective. How do you do that? You have many options, so let's look at some of them. Your SMS will help you to consider which method might be most effective. You can choose more than one. Using your background and experience, you decide that continuous monitoring, 
checking the status of the power line by overflying the canyon during good visibility missions and becoming a squeaky wheel at the power company, and internal audits fit your needs best. Now that you have made your monitoring decision, break out the pen and paper and document it. Okay, you know what you want to do, but exactly how are you going to do this monitoring and data acquisition? Overflying the canyon and looking at the power line from a safe distance is simple enough, but how about this fancy term, data acquisition? Data acquisition is simply the information you gather each day while operating your business. It includes mission orders, flight plans, fueling reports, maintenance reports, safety notices, and all the other various bits of data that make up normal business processes. Now that we've acquired this data, let's analyze it. Every month you pay the bills and review the financial, maintenance, operational, and human resource aspects of your company. Since you have an SMS, you also review your safety status at the same time. It's become second nature to thumb through mission sheets, maintenance logs, account balances, and the SRM and SA notebooks. You look for things that are out of place or dangerous, or trends that are going in the wrong direction. That is analysis. Each time you do your reviews, you make an entry in your notebooks noting anything found and the dates. That's documentation. Now how much time have you invested? What does it cost you? What has been your resource outlay? We are still looking for that something new, something you've never done before in your aviation career. Over a period of time, your analysis of the controls you have implemented to mitigate the risk of the unmarked power line justifies your assessment that your controls continue to work as expected. You can sleep better at night because you know you have documented evidence that you're identifying hazards, assessing risk, implementing controls, and monitoring controls to ensure their effectiveness. You are confident that you are exercising due diligence and have one of the safest operations on the airfield, a fact you bring up to your insurance company at policy renewal time. Are you finished with the safety assurance process yet? Not quite. So what's next? You got it, the happy loop. Looking at the system in operation, acquiring data, analyzing that data, and assessing that the system is doing what it's supposed to do. You continue to monitor your risk controls on a routine basis. So when does the process end? Will putting visibility markers on the power line eliminate the hazard? or just further mitigate the risk. You're right, burying the power line is the only way to remove the risk. In other words, remove the hazard. Visibility markers are just another risk control. You now have safety risk management and safety assurance well covered. So what about the other two components of your SMS? Safety policy, and safety promotion. Let's take a quick look. Safety policy and objectives. You've had that in the front of your reading file since you set up your SMS and you review it periodically. How about management commitment and key personnel? That's easy, it's you. Emergency preparedness. You've got a company emergency call roster and everyone has their pocket in case of emergency card. Documentation and records. Got it. Safety promotion. 
You do that. Remember, SMS is about the knowledge of safety management. That's what counts. Even the Wright brothers recognized the need for risk management. This quote from Wilbur Wright, written two years before the famous powered flight on December 17, 1903, exemplifies the Wright's attitude. It's clear that their attitude toward risk management was a key element in their ultimate success.